I know that you guys don't like me to feature discontinued fragrances in videos that I'm talking about specific topics, but it seems you guys really like the idea of covering a whole video on discontinued fragrances. I did a one a couple of weeks ago and it was really, really successful. Most of you commented and enjoyed that video and asked for another. So I've got several more planned, including today's. I've got more discontinued fragrances that I think are definitely worth checking out if you haven't. Perhaps you have and you never bought a bottle, but maybe it's time for you to buy a bottle now or to hunt one down. But 15 discontinued fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about discontinued fragrances. These are all fragrances that I have in my collection. They're all discontinued. Some might be easier than others to find or get. Some might be very, very difficult to get. But if you have a chance to get them, definitely get them, uh, as I think they're definitely great fragrances. The other thing is, um, a lot of people buy on eBay. It's a little challenging to buy on eBay because you're never sure if you're going to end up with a, uh, a fragrance that's kept fresh and things like that. Uh, and then uh, there's probably also some retailers that uh, outside of eBay that sells discontinued fragrances or vintage fragrances as well. So it's a little risky to do that. But I've had fairly good luck. I've recently bought a bunch of uh, discontinued fragrances from uh, someone getting rid of uh, their own collection. Some of the top notes were no longer great, but eventually the fragrances spray uh, after, I mean, after it's sprayed and it kind of like uh, the top notes are kind of uh, dried up uh, and you're moved into the heart and base, they start smelling uh, better. But sometimes the top notes do get. Um, um, turned, they turn so it doesn't smell as good when you first spray it. But either way, I've got 15 fragrances here. Some of them are discontinued recently, some of them uh, a long time ago, and I got a couple of bonus ones for men that I think they're on their way out. So find out about them. Before I get to the fragrances though, if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So one of my very first fragrances that I got in to when I started doing reviews it was a fragrance from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. The collection had, I mean, the brand had a lot more signature line fragrances. Now there's not that many, if any, except for their collection Extraordinaire. I think the only signature collection fragrance I see might be First for the ladies. It's called First, one of their classic fragrances that's aldehydic. But one of the fragrances I got into a lot was Midnight in Paris in the Eau de Toilette concentration and the Eau de Parfum concentration. One of the most beautiful and cozy fragrances when I first uh, you know, started doing videos and I think I bought my bottle in early 2013 because I started doing reviews in August of 2012, somewhere in August, September. But this is also a fragrance that kind of reminded me of Bulgari Black, but it was a different twist on it. And it featured notes of leather, tonka, tea, incense, benzoin, almonds, amber, mate, rosemary. I mean, it was created by Domatil Michelon Bertier along with Olivier Polge before Olivier went to work at Chanel. He replaced his own father as the in-house perfumer there. But a great fragrance. It's a little cozy. It's a little ambery. It's got tea. It's got some aromatics. It has leather. And so the combination was great. And it was one of the most beautiful bottles, as you can see. Really, really gorgeous uh, bottle. Uh, too bad it's gone. Um, I have these two fragrances and then I also have a couple of backups of each. Uh, but if you can find yourself a bottle, maybe get it because um, it's got a following, and it was disappointing when they discontinued that one. Moving on to the house of Anik Guttal. Anik Guttal has now become Guttal Paris. The fragrance I'm going to feature here, a discontinued fragrance that I really, really love, is Vetiver, this one right here. So Vetiver is such a great salty vetiver. Uh, it took on a little bit of an aquatic marine uh, direction or personality, but uh, it was more the salt rather than the marine uh, note. But it's a very, very grassy vetiver. Earthy touches uh, come in as well. Definitely very, very woody. And of course, it features spices, sea salt, some tobacco, sandalwood, tonka beans. This was created by Anik Guttal along with some other person, Henry Sorasana. I think that's how you say it. I can't remember exactly, but it's a, a great, great fragrance. So this was discontinued, and then Anik Guttal launched these le colognes, like large bottle cologne fragrances, and it came back as that 
particular fragrance, but they never relaunched it again in a, in a regular bottle. But it is really, really a great smelling fragrance. Absolutely love it. I like that saltiness. That, that, that fusion of salt and vetiver is a, a great experience that I, I really like. There is a fragrance called Sell the Vetiver from uh, the different company. They don't smell alike. It is also salt and vetiver. But to me, this reminds me of Lalique Angenoir Sport a little bit. So if you like this fragrance and you're looking for a alternative, might want to try that Lalique. Uh, again, they're not identical, but it reminds me of uh, that particular fragrance. But this is great. It's Vetiver from the house of Anique Goutal. A wonderful, wonderful fragrance from that house. I am a big fan of that house when it used to be Anique Goutal. They also, they had such great fragrances. Moving on to the house of Byredo. This was a limited edition fragrance. It launched. The, it disappeared, got relaunched, and now it's been disappeared. I actually discovered that... Uh, when I went to the Byredo boutique here in San Francisco, they told me that it's permanently discontinued. This is unnamed or not named or without a name or whatever it's called because it doesn't really have a name on it as you can see. And it came with this little stickers and you can put the name on it yourself kind of thing. So you can just call it whatever you want. But what I like about this one is the violet, orris root, pink pepper. Gin, balsam fir, oak moss. A creation by Jerome Epinay. He does a lot of the fragrances over at Byredo. He did a great job with this one and it does have a signature touch. It also has a very Byredo smell. But what I like about this one is that there's a... See, they, they call it violets, but I think it's violet leaves because it has a very ozonic quality. And I'm picking up apples, cucumbers, a little sweetness, but definitely powdery, definitely musky, a little spicy. A great scent. I really like this one. One of my favorite Byredos. And sadly, that's all I have left. Uh, unnamed from the House of Byredo. A great, great fragrance that's discontinued. So if you can find it and you know you've sampled it before and you liked it, definitely pick up a bottle. Next, I'm going to the House of Lush slash Gorilla Perfume. Uh, it used to be Gorilla Perfume, but they did change the or they dropped the Gorilla Perfume and called it Lush Fragrances. Uh, but it's Rentless. This is all I have of Rentless. This was a fragrance that launched in 2017 and I bought it at an event for Lush. Uh, and I really, really liked this kind of ambery, doughy kind of patchouli experience. I really, really loved this one. But sadly, it's discontinued. Or I think on their website, it's, it's still there, but it's, it says out of stock and not available for to repurchase or something. But it features patchouli, labdanum, tonka beans, grapefruit. It's a great, great fragrance. Very different kind of a patchouli. But it's kind of like the marriage of doughy amber, balsamic, and, and resinous with, you know, that earthy patchouli with tonka beans and some light citrusy touches. It's a shame. I don't know what's going on with this particular company. Um, I know they have their more popular fragrances, which I don't have, but this was one of my favorites and I absolutely loved it. Rentless from the house of Lush slash Gorilla Perfume. Moving on to the house of Tower Perfumes, it's Noontide Petals, a fragrance that hardly anyone speaks about. This is really, really great. It's a, such a great fragrance that I haven't seen an aldehydic fragrance that uh, Tower Perfumes or Andy Tower created. This is created by Andy Tower of Tower Perfumes, but it's a great combination of this fizziness with loads of flowers and that very, very uh, distinctive uh, Tower Odd, which is basically the Tower Perfumes DNA. You can totally smell it in here. It's right there right up my nose. I can smell it. I can tell it's a Tower Perfumes fragrance, but it's got loads of citruses, aldehydes, you know, aromatics, and lots of floral touches. It's noontide petals, so it makes sense that they have lots of flowers in this particular fragrance. Eventually, it does have an ambery touch and a, a little bit of a woody touch, but it's all floral, citrusy, aromatic, and um, aldehydic. So that's noontide petals. Uh, are you familiar with that one? I don't think a lot of people talk about that one. Uh, probably more more of his uh, diehard fans know that particular fragrance. But what about this one from the House of Tom Ford? A feminine targeted release, Violet Blonde. Another great, great fragrance. This to me is a combination of the flower 
and also the leaves but according to the databases it says violet leaves I get the, f the actual flower in here as well because they smell completely different violet as a flower and the violet leaves they have a different smell to me uh, violet uh, the flower has a powdery kind of makeup -y kind of a smell a uh, little vegetal and then the the leaves themselves has an ozonic smell and as I was saying earlier here with the unnamed for me this is all violet leaves you can smell like little apples or crunchiness there's a crispness about it and that's the typical trademark of ozonic fragrances but violet blonde is very very powdery little makeup -y, lots of iris and there's actually a little leather in there as well like a suede leathery touch but it's beautiful it's really really beautiful fragrance it does have woody earthy touches as well some spices and sadly it got discontinued I think this was a time when this brand used to launch or Tom Ford used to launch some really great fragrances but I think since the mar market is very saturated with brands maybe they've lost their touch and they don't know what to do because other brands are doing them better so they haven't been launching really really great fragrances lately but this is a really really great fragrance I think you should check it out if you uh, if you haven't and if you can get a bottle smell it if you can because I think it's definitely worth having so a lot of these fragrances I don't wear too much I'll spray one spray to smell it again but I, I've got them uh, filed away at uh, a section of my studio where it's all vintage fragrances and one more thing I should uh, mention here in this video they have recalled all of one of the fragrances from the Rose Garden collection fragrances. Tom Ford is renaming Rose de Russie. So if you have a bottle of Rose de Russie, keep it. It's going to be a collector's item because it's been pulled from all the stores and they're going to call it something else. Go figure. All right, moving on to the House of Armani, another feminine targeted release. Oh, I should say, Violet Blonde does kind of lean unisex, I think. This one, on the other hand, maybe not so much. This is from the house of Armani. This is Sensi. This is a great, great creation from a collaboration between Alberto Morias and Jacques Cavalier. So Alberto Morias uh, is Firminish. He works for that firm. And I guess Jacques Cavalier used to work for that firm as well up until he got the job at Louis Vuitton. So this to me is a great smelling almondy nutty kind of ambery fragrance featuring black locust, almonds, benzoin, wheat, jasmine, rosewood, and lime. The black locust and the wheat is very, very unique in this fragrance. It does have a kind of characteristic of a light gourmandish touch with the amberiness and then of course the almonds nuttiness. It makes for a unique wear. I recently picked picked this one up from a friend that was getting rid of a lot of vintage and classic fragrances. I did a haul video and even though I think the top notes here are ruined, once I get past that top note spray, the fragrance is so good. Really, really great. Uh, really great fragrance. Sensi from the house of Armani. Short-lived, I think. I think. Although I think there was a flanker for that fragrance as well until it got discontinued. But Sensi by Armani is a great smelling fragrance if you can get your hands on one. So this is a fragrance that recently got discontinued from the house of Louis Vuitton. It's Sun Song. So uh, Louis Vuitton discontinued four fragrances and I did a separate video on that along with the launch of uh, their fragrance City of Stars. Sun Song, Cactus Garden, uh, Contre Moi and also A Hazard. All four of the fragrances apparently are discontinued, but uh, for sure at our Louis Vuitton store here, Sunsong and Cactus Garden are completely sold out. Uh, last time I was there, he said A Hazard is still available, and I don't know the status of Contre Moi, so I don't know what's going to happen with these fragrances, but most likely if there's a rumor that they're discontinued, they're definitely discontinued. But Sunsong came out along with a, tr a trio of fragrances, Afternoon sw Swim and Cactus Garden, so I guess Sunsong and Cactus Car Garden didn't really do well, so they cut them and they discontinued them, but it's a great summer fragrance citrusy orange blossomy so it's a citrus floral musky kind of an experience very fresh very floral very citrusy invigorating and I think it's a great fragrance to wear in the summertime but sadly it's discontinued this is a fragrance created by Jacques Cavalier as I mentioned he did that fragrance Sensi with uh, Alberto Morias uh, over at Fer the Fermanage firm um, but now uh, Jacques Cavalier works over at Louis Vuitton for LVMH so if you are a fan of that and you can still get a bottle get it because uh, 
a follower of, of mine recently told me, they, after I told them here locally, that uh, these are discontinued. She said she went and got the last bottle of Sunsong from one of the Louis Vuitton stores here and Cactus Garden from another, so they're, they're kind of gone. Moving on to the house of Kinski. This is Kinski. This is the only Kinski fragrance I know, but it's kind of, uh, when I used to go to Barney's, it used to be along with the eccentric mole molecule fragrances, and it's created by Geza Schoen, who does, uh, you know, the eccentric molecule fragrances. But this is a masterpiece, I think. I absolutely love this particular fragrance. Very, very well made. Very, very sexy, very, very musky, a little animalic. Uh, paying tribute to stuff from the 80s maybe 70s, but man, I'm so glad I found a bottle. Uh, I bought this when Barney's had their closeout in uh, January of 2020, just before the pandemic, and I, I was so happy because it is really, really a great smelling fragrance. It smells so, so good, and it pays tribute, as I said, to those fragrances of the 80s, maybe the 70s. It's got that kind of like funkiness, the animalic qualities that a lot of those fragrances had. I don't know if they're using the real stuff in here, but man, it smells really, really great. It has notes of castorium, cannabis, vetiver, oak moss, woods, juniper, musk, cedar, styrax, pink pepper. A lot of great stuff happening here. It's a delicious fragrance. If you can get a bottle, get it. And I don't really know 100% it's discontinued. I can't find it anywhere. And Lucky Scent distributes eccentric molecules and it's not on their website either. So I don't know what the status is, but I'm glad to have a bottle. If you can get a bottle, get it. It is really, really good. If you like kind of musky animalic fragrances. Now moving on to the house of Memo Paris. In 2019, April, May, I was in Paris. My second of the third trip I took in Paris that year. I went into the Memo Paris boutique and I had not seen this fragrance anywhere here locally because at the time Memo Paris was being sold at um, Neiman Marcus here and then it's still sold at uh, uh, jo um, what am I saying Javoy Javoy is in Paris in ZGO perfumery I had missed Manoa completely missed it but when I went to the store in um, Paris I went right to it because I really liked the look of this bottle but this fragrance when I sprayed it it totally reminded me of Something like a unique take on Guerlain's Shalimar, a more resinous, a little more robust, a little more oomphy version of Shalimar. So it was an instant buy for me. And the guy said, uh, the sales associate there said, we only have four or five more bottles of this left. It's discontinued. And once we sell out, we sell out. I'm glad to have it because it's really, really delicious. It's very, very ambery. It has a major, major Apopanax presence in here. Lots of it. So it's got this kind of sweet, ambery, resinous, balsamic experience along with the tonka beans, labdanum, ginger, cypress, vanilla, iris, lemon, and bergamot. Created by Alienor Messonnet. She's done a lot of fragrances for Memo Paris. This is probably one of her best creations. I really, really love it. Of course, I love ambers. Uh, she did a great job on this one. Manoa from the House of Memo Paris. But moving on to the House of Molten Brown, it's Jubilant Pine and Patchouli. Now this is not discontinued, it was a limited release. I'm featuring it here because it's hard to get now. And this one actually sold out during the holidays. It was launched, launched like probably in October of uh, 2021 and it was gone by the end of December. It's really, really great. I like the combination of pine, because I like pine fragrances. I love the smell of the pine forests. And of course, they've combined it with patchouli, so it's kind of like a Christmassy, earthy, kind of a woody experience with light fruits thrown in. But it features pine, juniper berries, patchouli, cinnamon, amber, red fruits, vanilla, musk. This is created by Jacques Chabert. But let me show you how much, well, I have a pretty full bottle. I didn't use up too much of it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty full still, but um, it's a really, really great fragrance. And I think the, this brand does these limited edition releases, and I don't know why they do them. Uh, it's kind of a... I guess maybe they have to do it, but um, if, if it's a limited release and you love it, make sure you have a backup if you really, really love it, because you never know if it's going to last. But moving on to the house of Frederick Mall, this is Dries Van Noten. This is a discontinued fragrance, and I haven't seen a fragrance that getting discontinued over at Frederick Mall. I don't know why this one discontinued. I, I think I remember them telling me what, but now I've forgotten why it was discontinued. It's created by Bruno Jovanovic, and Bruno Jovanovic works at IFF 
international flavors and flavors. No, he doesn't anymore. He used to. And Frederick Mall fragrances are all created by IFF perfumers. So Bruno Jovanovic has moved on to Furmanish, I believe, from what I read online. But he does have another fragrance over at Frederick Mall called Miss You. But this sandalwood fragrance is really, really great. It's a medicinal sandalwood, but kind of sweet and vanillic at the same time. And it features, of course, sandalwood and vanilla with saffron, nutmeg, tonka beans, guyac wood, patchouli, musk, woods, clove, and peru balsam. It's definitely a great fragrance. And I kind of also associate it with something like Ani from the house of Nishane. They're completely different fragrances. This one is darker to me. And as I was saying, a little more medicinal. Well, not a little, a lot more medicinal than something like Ani, which has this kind of like bright uh, spiciness of uh, ginger in there. But still a great fragrance. Really, really do love it. But it's discontinued and it's definitely no longer available. Uh, so uh, Dries Van Noten from the house of uh, Frederick Mall. And I wonder if it's because Dries Van Noten now has his own fragrances line and that's why that got discontinued. Because I thought maybe it's because Bruno Jovanovic is no longer at IFF. He moved on to Furmanish, but uh, Missio is still selling over at Frederick Mall. So this fragrance, probably not going to know what it is. This is from a house called Odori Profumi di Firenze Tabacco. I've got Tabacco from this house, and also I have Cuoyo, which I think is leather, but Tabacco, oh my god, it's so good. So, so good. This is created by Bruno, not Bruno, Enzo Gallardi. I think he is the perfumer of... Um, Boys 1920, or used to be, and he has a couple of other brands now. But a great kind of a musky tobacco fragrance that I was obsessed over. But when I found out it was discontinued, I stopped using it. And I love these bottles. They're kind of fun. Anyway, woody kind of bottles. But it features notes of tobacco, incense, vanilla, eucalyptus, oak moss, jasmine, vetiver, bitter orange. Lovely, lovely fragrance. Absolutely love this tobacco fragrance. To me, this is not an ashy tobacco. It's a leafy tobacco with some light ashiness thrown in or some dirtiness. Like There's definitely like a little animalic thing happening here. So Odori Prof. Fumi di Firenze uh, Tabaco. Great, great fragrance. Anybody know that one? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. So Maison Francis Kirchner has been discontinuing a lot of great fragrances. And sadly, I was not able to buy a backup bottle of uh, Absolute Pour Le Soir. But recently, uh, in the community here, somebody was selling a bottle of this and I had never bought a bottle. I instantly sta snatched it up. This is APOM, Apom Pour Homme from the house of Maison Francis Kirchner. So this to me, a lot of people say it kind of reminds uh, them of uh, something like um, Gautier 2 from the house of uh, Gautier, which is coming back from what I hear. If you haven't heard this, uh, definitely check into it. It's coming back in the fall. But this is also reminding me of something like... Um, Kobe from the house of Zerzhov. So it's kind of a combination of amber, uh, ambery touches, lots of it, with woods and of course the orange blossom or orange flower in this case, in this particular fragrance. It's a great scent, really, really great. I never really got into it while it wasn't part of the brand, but it was discontinued and I was actually looking for it and it kind of just landed in my lap and I'm hoping and praying that a bottle of Absolute Pour Le Soir will, will land in my lap. And when I say that, uh, I know a lot of people in the community here who sell fragrances from their collection, so I'm hoping the same thing will happen. But I am so glad to have APOM, APOM Pour Homme. I don't remember what the APOM Pour Femme is like. Has it, does anybody know? But this is a great scent now. It's APOM Pour Homme from the house of Maison Francis Kirchner. And the last fragrance I'm going to talk to you about today is from the house of L'Occitane. It's a brand I don't hardly spe speak about, hardly ever. In fact, never. This is Ombre and Santal. This is all I have left. This is a really, really great, great amber fragrance. Shockingly good from this house, but it came and went so fast. This is created by the perfumer Karine de Bru Sereni. She created Gucci Pour Homme 2. She also created a fragrance called uh, Lalique uh, White in Black. Uh, I don't know if you guys checked that uh, review out of mine. Go check it. But Ombre and Santal is really a really, really great amber fragrance. I don't know why it was discontinued. Maybe it just didn't click with people, but you know, I use quite a bit of it and this is all I have left. And it's delicious. It's sandalwood, labdanum, vanilla, cedar, fig leaf, 
rose, rosemary and bergamot. Really, really very, very cozy, greenish kind of spicy vanillic amber fragrance. That's to die for. Anyway, this brand does really make great fragrances, L'Occitane. I need to go and see what they have. I've worn so many fragrances of theirs and I have no longer have a lot of them. The only ones I really have are this, a little bit left, and then Vetiver that I have a little left. Um, but they had a Neroli. It was a bomb, a Neroli bomb in a 30 ml tiny bottle I wore back in like the early 2000s. Man, you spray one spray of that stuff, it was nuclear. Either way, I need to go check out L'Occitane fragrances, but Ombre and Santal is definitely a great, great fragrance. Anyway guys, these are the list of uh, discontinued fragrances that I think you should check out. Um, uh, I'll be doing more of these. I've got a couple more planned and I hope to do them within the next two, three weeks. But let me know if you're fans of these fragrances. Uh, are, do you have a bottle? Have you been looking for a bottle? What are your thoughts on these particular fragrances? And also let me know what other discontinued fragrances are worth seeking out, looking to find and buy and have on hand because they are so, so good. Let me know, put a comment down uh, so that I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, I did mention there was a couple of bonus fragrances. These two fragrances, bonus fragrances, are both for men, so male targeted. So there's a rumor out there that Hermes is, Terre d'Hermes Eau Très Fresh is getting discontinued. It's no longer on the uh, the Hermes website, but I see a lot of stock out there. Nordstrom had it, Sephora had it, I'm assuming Macy's has it. If they don't, maybe they're just not selling it. And there were some, um, you know, stock out there at the discounters as well. It's one of my favorites, but the rumor is that there's some ingredient in here that something is wrong with it and they're no longer going to sell it. And it's being replaced by the new Gevre, um, I forgot the name, that new one that's coming out if it hasn't landed already. But I love this one because it's just this really, really sparkly, fruity, juicy, orange experience with citruses and watery notes and geranium and woods and cedar and patchouli. And there's also this like light cumini touch under there, but a great, very, very refreshing, spicy citrus fragrance experience. If it is that, that it is discontinued, I definitely need to go buy another bottle. This is all I have left, but it's a great creation by Jean-Claude Hilena. A wonderful fragrance. Another rumor out there, which is definitely confirmed, but not completely discontinued, this fragrance was on the Dior website for men. It's a Dune Pour Homme. It is no longer on the Dior USA website. I did check the French website. It's still on there. And there is some stock out there at discounters as well. So it was brought back because it was taken off for a long time. It was brought back to the USA website. It has now been removed as well. But I love this one. It's a great smelling fragrance. You know, it's got this kind of figginess. It's got the fig leaf and the fig fruit experience and also sandalwood, cassis, hedion, clary sage, rose, cedar, tonka beans, basil. It's created by Jean-Pierre Bertois and also Olivier Cresp. They did a great job of this one. I'm glad it's around. It's from the 90s, but it's it smells really, really great and figgy. Uh, I love that one. But yeah, it's no longer on the USA website, so it's not completely discontinued, but since it is removed off the USA website, it might be less and less easy to get this particular fragrance here in the States. Either way, Dune Pour Homme from the House of Dior is the last fragrance I'm talking about today, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good one and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.